Oh, I hear you. Can, can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, th thanks, Hiroshi san and thanks Orange for having us here. Much, much appreciated. Uh, uh, my name is Dharma and I'm the product director at BPV. So we're an Australian based company and we specialize in data engineering for radio networks. Right? So for, for your background, radio networks or, or the RAN as we call it, uh, is, the, is that last mile for, for mobile networks. So it's the part that connects all those telecoms towers that you see often see around you to the user with the smartphone. Now, as these networks become more complex, now that 5G is in the picture, they become much more expensive to run. I think that's something we all are uh, quite aware of. But what we wanted to present today is uh, why we think human-led AI is really the pathway to figuring out how these networks need to be optimized for the 5G economy. So, and uh, if you have any questions uh, after the slideshow, yeah, feel free. Thanks. So okay, today, there are let over me try radio networks oh, around okay. the world. It's a $70 billion market and Orange is over 20 of these networks. Mobile technology is always evolving and now we have 5G. 5G was designed to enable a whole bunch of new industries, especially around the Internet of Things, smart cities, augmented reality. And as a consequence, it promises to have a huge positive economic impact. But how does it work on the ground? One of our clients in the gaming space complained that 5G is simply too inconsistent to use augmented reality. They can't get consistent bandwidth or latency. The reality is that 5G quality is fragmented and not because 5G is still being deployed, but because the ability to deliver that consistent quality everywhere is not that easy and very expensive. As an industry, when we try to improve mobile network quality, we focus on automation. We focus on real time. We focus on machine learning and sometimes for machine learning sake. Unfortunately, we stop focusing on the nature of today's problem, which is we don't know what kinds of problems we're going to get. We don't know how complex they're going to be. We won't know what the interdependencies are. And amidst all of that, every network in every country is different. So fundamentally, we believe we have to rethink how we optimize 5G in the RAN. So what we propose is a specific pattern-based approach where we keep humans in the loop and we focus our AI efforts very targeted, in a very targeted manner. And this we do using our products QNET for analytics and NextG for machine learning. So first, we use radio analytics to get to the core of any problem. That means doing a lot of data engineering, problem visualization, getting all our data together, and getting clear about the problem we want to solve. Then we add a layer of machine learning so we can start labeling patterns within the problem space, trying to see how the dots line up. We start to give the problem a little bit of structure. And finally, we connect these labels using graph technology so we can see the relationships between these different variables, all the good and all the bad. And now we're in a position to take all these bad relationships in the network and replace them with better ones. And that's how we improve the network. Now the benefit of this decoupled approach where we split the data engineering, the visualization, the labeling and the optimization means it can handle almost any new 5G problem. And that means the financial benefits are really much more achievable. And the benefit, the other the side benefit is along the way the telcos participate, they learn, they grow and they understand their network a lot better. Now today, we have a reference with Vodafone Australia. We're engaging in trials with operators in the region. We're working with gaming companies to optimize 5G from an, from an end user perspective. And, but what we're most excited about is really the human angle to the 5G story. Now for most people in the telco industry, 5G is a bit of an adventure. New, techno new technology comes out, there are new possibilities. So when it first comes out, we get trained. But as the network evolves, we run into challenges. So we learn new skills to cope with these new types of problems. But the business pressure to automate is high. And when that happens, we slowly appear to be less relevant. And then AI comes in and we start to lose value because apparently AI can do things much better. And this really brings us to the, to the fork in the road. Which direction do we take? Do we let AI lead or we, do we let humans lead? There's a lot of pressure, I mean, no doubt, and hype to let AI guide what we do. 
But if we take a step back, we find that automation and AI on their own cannot solve most issues. We discover that the secret seems to be using human cognition to help AI find patterns and, and join the dots. So we now start learning how to train AI systems and learning how to provide context. And eventually, we are in a position to guide AI to help us deliver the things we're looking for in the first place, which is 5G that works for the economy. Thanks very much. Roshi-san, um, um, is it me or can I not hear you? <laughs> yeah, we don't hear you. Uh, I, I will say a few words, uh, if you mind. So I'm, I'm Ludovic, we already spoke uh, in the past uh, yeah. about your solution. And especially to, uh, so this is Yao from Orange uh, uh, Organization uh, China. To, uh, Orange in, uh, in France about 5G. Uh, I really uh, believe in your solution, and I think it's a, it's a can be a real value for a telco operator. Um, I'm, I'm, I wanted to apologize about uh, the delay it takes to, uh, to, 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 to to accept uh, to the team that are in charge of, of this issue, of, uh, because you know. Uh, as it is the same around the world, uh, all operators are uh, deploying 5G, and uh, and the issue we have is uh, uh, most of the team are really overdue with many projects, and uh, it's very difficult at the moment to get the attention of these people uh, for new projects. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I will continue. Um, uh, fighting about it and, uh, and uh, getting some answer and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, um, moving on uh, with this project uh, in Europe with uh, Orange. Thank you. Thanks Ludovic, I uh, really appreciate it. I enjoyed, enjoyed our chat last time and don't worry, we know we know the, uh, the, the lead time, lag time problems very well. So, but thanks again for your support. Okay, so maybe I will ask uh, you about uh, about the solution. Um, um, as you said, you you try to optimize usage of five G infrastructure and software and so on. So you try to help not only operators but also uh, the customers uh, yeah. of operators. So if you could uh, tell a little bit more about the functionalities, how uh, the solution really works, what are the process, the steps of helping the operator. So, I, I think I think there's two two parts to it, right? Uh, one is the, the the I guess the the software or the technical part, and the second part is the the training and the coaching that comes with actually educating the operator on how to use it. And we we follow I guess what we call data engineering principles, right? We we we're quite agnostic and say we look at the the raw data first. And the challenge has been most telcos are not used to looking at it that way, right? It's we know. The technology we know the RAN. This is how we've done do it. This is how we've always done it. So it's kind of a mindset should to say, well, leave that aside. Look at the data first. Let's see if we can visualize your problem. And we use off the shelf tools, right? And they're not used to it. It's usually Ericsson providing something or Nokia providing something. So we use Tableau. This is how you see the problem, and this is how you play around with the with the figures until you understand the problem. And then now you can feed the data into uh, a specific machine learning or, or uh, I guess what we call labeling, where you, you try and simplify the problem, right? Because in, in 5G, the, especially with the interdependencies with 4G, they're very complex. So we try and simplify by using labeling, but hey, no, no one's used to labeling problems. So now we got to educate them to label. And then it moves to the next step. Okay. What do we do, right? Uh, okay, now you can cluster and start to narrow the problem down. But you see, we've gone these four steps and we still haven't come to any solution, but that's almost how it is for complex interdependent problems. There's kind of no way around it. But so, so the challenge we have is more the education, right? There are steps, but it's slow and you can't see value in two days. You can't see value in a month. It's, it's, it's a long tail kind of a problem that we're solving. Is that okay. sort of... <laughs> Okay, th thanks. And what's your business model exactly? Uh, it's s services and uh, licensing, right, for software. 
although what we're finding now is it's more towards the services because there's so much of coaching required, right? just understanding how to use machine learning and AI for radio. Okay. Okay. Thanks.